Hi guys and welcome to episode 15 of Kent Walks. This week I'm exploring a tucked out of the way village at the foot of the North Downs, Kemsing. The walk starts at the car park just off the high street behind the Heritage Centre. From the car head back out to the high street and turn right. Take the second right footpath opposite St Edith's Road to climb the downs. Veer left of the bench and follow the marked North Downs Way until you arrive at the tarmac entrance to Otford Manor. Turn right along the drive and after 200 metres head over a stile on the left. Head across the field into Fab's Wood and keep on the path to emerge at Cotman's Ash Lane. Turn right and just past the rising sun turn right on a marked path. Keep following as the path jiggles around to head southwest and the views start to open up across the valley. Turn left through a gate and drop onto the Pilgrim's Way. Turn right and keep an eye out for a signed path to the left which heads into an open sports field. Head right of the copse of trees to arrive at Kemsing Church. Through the courtyard and turn left straight into the car park. So this is Kemsing High Street and I'm standing next to St Edith's Hall which houses the Kemsing Heritage Centre as well as a conventional village hall that can be hired for a multitude of social, recreational and commercial purposes and it's fully licensed too. It's also where St Edith Folk calls home, avid supporters of live music and the hall regularly sees some quite impressive bands since it started in 2013. So that's the hall today, but as a Grade 2 listed building built in 1911, you'd think it would have seen some sights and have quite a history. And it doesn't disappoint. When war broke out in 1914, the hall was offered up to the Kent Voluntary Aid Detachment as a hospital to support the war movement. It was staffed by trained nurses and VAD nurses who had first aid training. During the time that the hospital was open, over a thousand patients were treated. A bit further along by the war memorial is St Edith's Well. So the question has to be asked, who is St Edith? A plaque mounted on the wall at the front of the well reads, St Edith of Kemsing, AD 961 to 984. This well lay within the precinct of the convent where St Edith, daughter of King Edgar, passed her childhood. Hallowed by her presence, its waters became a source of healing. In fact, St Edith was the illegitimate daughter of Edgar I. Her mother was St Wolfrith, a nun of noble birth whom Edgar forcibly carried off from her monastery at Wilton in Wiltshire. He brought her here to one of his residences where she stayed with him for at least a year whence Edith was born. It seems Edith spent her childish in a convent here but when she was older she was sent to a convent at Wilton. We know that a number of miracles were brought by her great holiness but austerity and devotion to God was always at the forefront of her time as a nun. She was also known for her charities to the poor and for her love of wild animals. After her death at a fairly young age of 23, miracles occurred at her tomb and a shrine was set up in Kemsing to which pilgrimages were established with her well a focus of healing.
So now we're in the heart of Kemsing Down Nature Reserve, well worth a visit for the panoramic views alone. This 40 acre reserve includes ancient woodland, secondary woodland and scrub with areas of chalk grassland on the south facing slopes. Much of the downland has been lost, but there are still four open glades that are managed by winter mowing and rabbit grazing. Orchids such as the man orchid, pyramidal orchid and the common spotted orchid can be found if you keep your eyes peeled. Butterflies are fairly common to see in the summer months, including the brown argus, common blue, dinghy and grizzled skipper. We're now approaching Otford Manor and I'm struggling to find much in the way of its history. What I do know, it was built in 1920 by a man who apparently didn't like people very much. This assumption seems based on the design of the manor in that inside it's like a rabbit warren. It has been used by various organisations over the years but as of 20 years ago has been the headquarters and offices from which Oak Hill operates. Oak Hall was founded in 1960 when Ian and Judy Mayo decided to take their youth group away on an expedition to learn more about God. Over the years as Oak Hall grew, providing opportunities for Christians to get away for a period of refreshment and missions abroad to countries previously dominated by communism to bring the light of the gospel into these dark areas, building churches and teaching the Bible. Another claim to fame for Kemsing concerns the Women's Institute. The WI movement began 7,222 miles away at Stony Creek, Ontario in Canada in 1897 when Adelaide Hoodless addressed a meeting for the wives of members of the Farmers Institute. WIs quickly spread throughout Ontario and Canada with 130 branches launched by 1905 in Ontario alone. The first WI meeting in Great Britain took place on the 16th of September 1915 in Anglesey, Wales. It had two clear objectives, to revitalise rural communities and to inspire women to become more involved in producing food during the First World War. Today, the WI with almost 220,000 members performs an irreplaceable role in offering women educational opportunities, the chance to build new skills, to take part in a wide variety of activities 
and to campaign on issues that matter to them and their communities. This is Kemsin Church, dedicated to St Mary. The church dates back to 1060 and is said to be haunted by knights who murdered Thomas a Becket. The knights are believed to have rode through Kemsing on their way to Canterbury. I was under the understanding that Saltwood Castle near Hythe played a part, but I'll be exploring that week after next. According to legend, a knight is seen praying at the altar at the church every year on December the 29th, before vanishing. One question that does come to mind is St Edith is quite the Kemsing hero, it would seem. So why isn't the church dedicated to her?